How you doing guys? Hope everybody's having a great weekend. So today will be the start of a new series of videos I'm going to do. This will be the part one. Uh, be called Timeline Navigating Through the Bible. And what I want to first start off is I want to, I constructed the timeline to aid those that are first starting out learning with what dispensations are, how to rightly divide the word of truth, things of this nature. So that's why I laid out this timeline. And starting today, I wanted to explain what is a dispensation. The word dispensation is located four times in your Bible. If you go to these verses, I know this might be hard to see. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17, Ephesians 1, verse 10, Ephesians 3, verse 2, Colossians 1, verse 25. That is where you'll find the word dispensation at. Now, this matters because the word dispensation is not a time period. But in fact, it is instructions in a time period. So, throughout your Bible, there are dispensations. There, there was a dispensation from when Moses got the law, when God gave Moses the law for the nation of Israel, to when... Christ died on the cross, having fulfilled and completed the law, which most people do not believe can be fulfilled for some strange reason. It was fulfilled by Jesus Christ on the cross. That was, a, that was the dispensation of law. Now, you're not going to find that in your Bible. You're not going to find anything that says dispensation of law. But if you understand, again, you go to these verses, the word dispensation is right there. Paul talks about the dispensation of grace that's been given to him to give them to us, to tell us. Uh, starting out very quickly, let's just go one of those verses so I can show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. For if I do, for if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. See what I'm saying? Rules in time period. Of the good news was given to him. Ephesians 1.10. Let's go there. Ephesians 1 verse 10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word. How that by revelation he made, he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote before in few words. Whereby when you read, you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So there's been dispensations throughout this, throughout all of time. Periods of time where God gave instructions. And if you go to Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, we'll go there. Hebrews 1 verse 1. We're going to be going throughout the entire Bible within these 30 minutes. It's usually how long it takes for me to talk. Hebrews 1 verse 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Now this verse does not have the word dispensation in it. But this is explaining right here exactly how God speaks. So remember dispensations is instructions in a time period. A lot of people attribute this to this is a dispensation. That's what Paul is saying. He's talking about the dispensation in these verses. But this Hebrews 1 verse 1 shows you how God speaks to people. So even though the word dispensation is not there, it is undeniable that he is explaining that he in different times and in different matters he spake and time passed unto the fathers by the prophets. 
So that means he spoke to them differently here. He spoke to them differently here. You can't mix these up. And right here at the beginning line, I, I, I didn't have enough room. But this is, I'm talking about since Adam and Eve, since the garden. It's a dispensation. There was no law back here. Some people try to say there was law. There was no law back here. There was just commandments. God gave commands to people. That's why I meant to say commands. He gave commands to them. It was, it was not until God gave Moses the law. You can look at this line. I kind of wrote it right here. When God gave Moses the law to give to the nation of Israel, that is when the dispensation of law started. That's when it was all law. It was not until the law was completed and fulfilled at the cross. Keywords completed, fulfilled. It was fulfilled. I'm going to show you that. You must understand this. But that's roughly dispensations right there. And when you rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, when you're rightly dividing the scripture, the truth, you, this is, we've just performed a division right here. God gave law to Moses. He did not give law to the Adam and Eve. He gave Adam and Eve a command. Don't eat from this tree. It doesn't say it's law. He just said don't eat from this tree. That specific tree where the, the, that forbidden fruit, we don't know what the fruit is, we told them not to eat from there, right? Of course, they disobeyed. Then, for Moses, he said, okay, here's the law. You and the nation of Israel will do this law. That's, those are different things. That is what I mean by rightly dividing word of truth. That is what I mean by understanding what dispensation. What rules are you under in that time period? What rules were the nation of Israel under in this time period of, of dispensational law? They were under law. If you go to wait, John 1.17 very quickly. John 1 verse 17. For the law was given by Moses... But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the law was given. Right here. Um, but the law was not given here. It was not given to Adam and Eve. It was given to Moses. So those are, I mean, that's rightly divided. That's, that's it. That's what we mean by when, when I say rightly divided word of truth. See the differences. Compare and contrast. That's what I'm saying. So... A lot of people refuse to do this. A lot of people refuse to do 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. They'll take a verse and they'll stand on it while at the same time trying to do another verse, which is impossible. You cannot both forgive, forgive others so God forgives you. That's a verse I'm paraphrasing. While at the same time, forgive others because God has already forgiven you. Jesus Christ has already forgiven you it, Comparing two different verses, I didn't give you the chapters or verses, but I'm just trying to give you an explanation of how to rightly divide the word of truth. For There's so many examples I could give you of that, but we're gonna, you're just going to naturally see as we go through this process how you're dividing the word of truth. Naturally, just by reading the scripture, it divides itself. You're going to read one verse here, and you're going to notice, okay, that's not the same as this. These are two different verses. That, that's weird to me. How is it doing that? Um, okay, I'll give you an example. If I can, if I can remember the verse. I have it written up here. Uh, let me see. Romans 6, verse 14. Yeah, let's do Romans 6, verse 14, and let's do, Levit 
Leviticus 26, verse 46. If I can find it myself. Leviticus 26, verse 46. Now, most people today will believe the law is to them. And they'll, they'll, they'll even use this verse right here. These are the statutes, Leviticus 26, verse 46. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Now, as plain as that verse says, it, it, it even says, I mean, the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. So how in the world would you think God made a law, made this these statutes and judgments and laws for you is it, beyond me. But here's how we're rightly dividing right here. Go, go to Romans 6. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Or, you can even do, yeah, that's it. That was the verse I was talking about. There's another verse I just saw that was saying you've been delivered from the law. I wish I could find that one. It's a verse I just found that said you, you delivered from the law. But we are not under the law. While the law was given to the nation of Israel, you can't be under both. If you're going to say the law was given to you, right? Paul just said you're not under the law. Can it be both? Can you be under the law and not under the law at the same time? No, you cannot. It's impossible. If the law is given to Brandon, and then another guy comes up and says, you're not under that law. I'm going to think that guy's lying. I'm like, no, our law was just given to me. I'm just talking about today in our own practical, like right now. Somebody's like, here's a new law. And then comes out and says, all right, guys, that law that I just gave you was, is for you. But at the same time, you're not under the law. That's what these preachers are telling you when you're listening to them. But that's a whole nother video. So... Because I just want to go very slow, very slow. So, talk about dispensations a little bit. Talk about rightly dividing word of truth, 2 Timothy verse 15. Talked about how the law started back here with Moses. And it ended right here at the cross. I'm going to give you that verse showing you that the law ended at the cross. But first I want you to understand, you need to ask yourself, what are you? What am I? Am I... Of the nation of Israel? Or am I what is known as a Gentile? Do a word search of the word Gentile. It will give you an answer as to what you are. There are a lot of people today that are confused and think they are not a Gentile. In fact, they, they will tell you, I am a Hebrew Israelite Jew. The Hebrew Israelite Jews died out a long time ago. What is left is the religion. So when someone is a Jew, a person that is a Jew today was a former, he's, he, he or she was a former Gentile, because everyone's born a Gentile. But they are now practicing that religion. They are a Jew by the religion, but they were born a Gentile. No one can ever be a Hebrew Israelite because they all died. God ended the nation of Israel. He ended temporarily, put it on pause. He ended that nation, nation of Israel. It's, it's over. The nation of Israel ended back there, but it will come back. I'm not talking about replacement theology. Nation of Israel will come back. But as of right now, they're fallen. There is no nation of Israel. I tell people, nation of Israel doesn't even exist. The land is there. 
That's all. It's just the land. The people that a lot of people say, I'm, I'm chosen, I am Israel, they don't even exist today. They won't come back until here. God's going to make the nation of Israel again. The nation will be born again over here. But as far as the individual people, I mean, we obviously know those that are of the nation of Israel back here all died out, right? But even they, I mean, of course, they will resurrect in this kingdom over here. But I want you to understand you are not a Hebrew Israelite Jew. You are a Gentile. And you must get this through your head because if you think you are a Hebrew Israelite Jew, then obviously you would listen to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because they have your doctrine. You'll even listen to the doctrine over here in Hebrews through Revelation. And that is what most people are doing because they fail to understand they are a Gentile. They don't want to believe it. They're, calling, they're, they're committing basically identity theft. They're stealing promises from Israel and saying, these promises are to me. Some are even knowing that they're Gentiles. There are some that know they are Gentiles and willfully steal stealing promises that God made strictly and only to Israel. And they don't care. So I just want you to understand, you're a Gentile. Look up the word Gentile. You come from another nation. You live in America, you're a Gentile. Even the people living on the land in Israel, over there, because that is Israel, that is the location of Israel. But that's the land. The people on the land, those are Gentiles. Because God's nation of Israel has fallen. It was risen at one time, but it has fallen today. When a nation falls, that nation identity is gone. If America was to fall, you're not an American living in another country. You, you have no nation. You see what I'm saying? You, you will become absorbed into whatever nation you're in. So if, a nation was, if America was just completely destroyed, why would you still be an American like, let's say you, you run to China or Russia or Europe. Why would you say, I'm an American? Your nation's gone. If your nation is gone, America is gone. The identity of an American is gone. Same with the people of the nation. When the nation of Israel failed, right? When it failed, the identity of being a Hebrew Israelite Jew was gone, eradicated. Now, you are just a Gentile. Because what was Abraham? Before Abraham was the father of uh, Israel and all that stuff, you know, not the father, but you get what I'm saying, of those, his children uh, that were, you know, came from him and his wife, literally the children of Israel. Was Abraham just born a Jew? Just born? No, he was a Gentile. Abraham was a Gentile. People forget this. It's like they don't want to believe that. Abraham was a Gentile. Now what happened? He became a Jew. He became, I mean, he was to be a, he became a Hebrew Israelite Jew. That's what he became. But he was always born a Gentile. So the point is, if when God is saying, when well, there is no nation of Israel, everyone reverts back to what they are, which is of the nations. That's what Gentile is, nations. If God doesn't have a chosen nation, then there's just nations. If you're not of the chosen nation, if there is no chosen nation today, which there isn't, that's what I'm telling you, you are a Gentile. People today still think, they somehow think America is the chosen nation. Or, here, or they'll say, well, I'm of Israel, then why were you born here? If you're of Israel, right? If you say you're of, you're of the chosen nation, why were you born in America? You were born here. They live. You realize the people back here that were part of the Israel? I'm about to get off this topic. I just really like to harp on this. They lived in Israel. They were born in Israel. They got circumcised in Israel. They were not born in Rome and said, God, I am of the seed of of." of you know, of, of, nation, of nation of Israel. No, you're not. You're born in Rome. You're born there. How are you? That doesn't make any sense. 
But that was back when they had a, a division between Gentile and the nation of Israel. And don't get me wrong, yes, were there Hebrew Israelites that went to Rome? Paul was a Hebrew Israelite that went to Rome. But I'm trying to get you to understand, without the nation of Israel, since there's no nation of Israel today, there are no Hebrew Israelites. All that remains is, a gen is Gentiles. It is not until God raises another nation, those will be the Hebrew Israelites. Until that happens, everybody is a Gentile. You must understand what you are, which is a Gentile. There are no Hebrew Israelites. There are Jews today, but the Jews is not the bloodline or the lineage. Being a Jew today is just practicing a religion. That's it. You're a Gentile. You're born a Gentile, and you have chosen to practice the, this religion from the Hebrew Israelites, from them who are all gone. Uh, God gave it to them. They did it, but they're all gone. You're now practicing it. Well, you're just a, you're a Jew now. While you're practicing that religion, you're a Jew, but you were still born a Gentile. I hope I'm not confusing you, but many people, because they think that that are a Hebrew Israelite Jew, that is why they refuse to see Romans through Philemon. They refuse to see Paul as their apostle. They're like, oh no, no, not me. Even my own family thinks they're Hebrew Israelites. And I said, why? Because we're chosen. No, you're not. You see what I'm saying? And they don't understand. They'll say, we are a chosen nation. I'm like, no, you're not. So people don't understand. There's a physical nation that was physically chosen. But the nations, everybody wants to call themselves that nation. It's strange. Everybody can't be that one nation. But they think it's, they don't, they're, they're, they're confused. So guys, um, let's see where this video's at. We're getting close. I, I spent a lot of time on that. I'm going to do a video, another video going into that more, uh, delving in that deeper. So once you understand you're a Gentile, let me tell you what happened to you during this time period. What, not what happened to you, but what you had. A lot of people try to say, you know, Gentiles, oh, they had the promises too, which is completely wrong. I'm going to show you exactly what you had during that time period. Okay. Go to Ephesians 2, verse 12. Ephesians 2, verse 12. Well, actually, verse 11. Ephesians 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision. Now, the circumcision in the flesh, guys, was Israel. I just have that written up here. Israel, they had the law. They were the circumcision in the flesh. Uh, let's see. Circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth. So Gentiles at this time were without Christ. And they were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. They were strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. This is why a lot of people don't want to, they, they don't like that word. They're like, oh, Gentiles don't have any hope. They don't have that. That's because they're looking at that verse. They're not rightly divided in the word of truth. They're just picking a verse out. They're like, oh, I'm not, a, I'm not a Gentile. I'm not a Gentile. Everyone's a Gentile today. You can't even help it. You, you were born a Gentile. You were not born into the nation of Israel. You were born in America, in Russia, Europe, wherever you were born at. You, you were born there. So, there, I mean, even if you're born in the nation of Israel today, God's nation of Israel failed. That's just the land. You can't call that place and say, God, this is the nation of Israel. God is saying, there's no nation of Israel today. The nation of Israel is fallen. Those are not my people. You can go to a verse in the Bible. I don't have it up on the board. I'll do it in the next video where God talks about, he, I mean, he prophesied the uh, 
there was a prophecy explaining that he would divorce Israel. He would tell them, you are not my people and I will not be your God. Well, that's pretty scary. So why would you still call yourself chosen when God has clearly said, you are not my people? Now, if you're not God's people, do you still think you're a Hebrew Israelite Jew? God says, you're not my people. I've told this to people. They say, I'm a Hebrew Israelite Jew. But God said right here, sir, you are not my people and I will not be your God. What do you have to say about that? And then they're just like, I don't care what that says. I am God's chosen nation. You just say you are not my people. I mean, you see how weird that is? God's like, you are not my people. I will not be your God. Nope. I'm your people. You are my God. Guys, he, he, he says, like, that's what people do. You are my God. You don't know, like trying to force God. Like, I, you are my God. Trying to strong arm them, God. <laughs> like, but, I mean, that's what people do. They, they want to say something that they are not. They don't care. So, again, it's just all, this is a lot of information, guys. This is going to take me literally probably four to five videos to get through all this. But, you understand you are a Gentile. And you didn't have the com covenant or promises. You didn't exist back here, obviously, right? But the Gentiles have never been given the law. That's what I want to explain to you. The Gentiles were never given the law. The law was given to Moses to give to the nation of Israel. The law has always been for the nation of Israel, never to the Gentiles. Why are there Gentiles today practicing the law as if the law was given to them? They're confused. Do they not know that the law was given to the nation of Israel? Do they not know that the law was completed and fulfilled at the cross? That's something else that most people just refuse to believe. We're going to go there right now. So I'm going to take you to... Colossians 2, verse 14. Well, this, well, I'm going to show you something that most people just refuse to believe. They don't, they don't care what this verse says. They don't want to believe it. Colossians 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Now, I want to say this. Even though the law was not given to Gentiles, the ordinances of the law was still against you. You were still, it was still against you, even though it wasn't given to you. You understand? So, I want you to understand, just because God did not give the law to Gentiles, they were still, the law was still against you. The ordinance was still against you. Because Paul, if you go to Romans 11, verse 13... He's the apostle of Gentiles. He, he speaks to Gentiles. He's the apostle of Gentiles. He magnifies his office. He's telling them right here in 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. He's telling them he's including himself and obviously the Gentiles he's speaking to, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So the ordinances that was against us was taken, took, was taken out of the way. Now, a lot of people that still don't believe the law is completed, why is this verse saying it's been taken out of the way? That's making sense. So, so would God take a law out of the way even though he hasn't completed it? Some people would tell you that, and that's sick. That is not the case. Uh, I'm going to go to your verse showing you that Christ came to fulfill the law. in Matthew but I want to just highlight that right there what I just showed you Rome, uh, Colossians 2 verse 14 the law is completed right there but this is a verse showing you that Jesus Christ came to fulfill the law people just don't believe he fulfilled it it's, it's really sad but they don't believe he, he fulfilled it Matthew 26 and this will probably be the last one I'll have to cut this off Matthew 26, 
Verse 28, I believe. No, that's not it. Sorry, guys, that's not it. Take me some time to look. Oh, guys, I'm about to cut this off. Yeah. So, um, I'll come back and I'll start the video on the next part, on part two, showing you how the law, how Christ said he came to fulfill the law. But I did give you the verse, Colossians 2, verse 14, showing you that those ordinances were nailed to the cross and taken out of the way. But, guys, until next time. So, um, uh, definitely I'm going to be doing a part one, and this will be going on for... Uh, entire series. All right, guys. Have a great day.